Hey, yo. Nick and Ryan here with you, the job guys. It's the end of the year, Nick. So we figured, since we just started this out, why not give our first ever end of the year awards? You know them, best wrestler of the year. We also give out a worst wrestler of the year. Best match, best show. We go all the way down, mic skills, all the stuff you're used to seeing. So we have 11 voters here. They gave us their first, their second, and their third place votes in all 21 categories. We then totaled them up. Boom, spit it out. Here we go. First place vote gets you five points. Second place vote gets you three points. Third place vote gets you one point. So it is weighted toward getting that one first place vote. And you will see in some of these, some guy may only got two votes, but they were two first place votes. So that put them higher up on the thing. And what we also tried to do, Nick, before you chime in real quick, is we tried to get a variety of people. So it's not just people like us who grew up in the 80s. Hello, Granny. Who grew up watching Hulk Hogan. We tried to get a good mix. We got some 20-year-olds. We got white dudes. We got black dudes. We got everybody we could possibly get from different eras and different backgrounds and different everything to mix this sucker up. We even have a network TV anchor from NBC News here with his thoughts. So we're kind of all over the place. And it is WWE, Raw and SmackDown, AEW, NXT. We're going to get this thing cracking, Nick, with our first category. It is biggest fall of 2020. Who was up here whose career was looking pretty good? And then it started sliding by the time we got here to December. Number two. Could easily have won this thing. Kofi Kingston, three votes, two first place. He gets 13, one shy of the Matt Hardy biggest fall of the year award winner. Miro, four votes out of the 11, two first, a second, and a third, 14 total points. Nick, hard to argue. He came to AEW. A lot of people were excited, and he's out here playing video games and dressing in Gucci and looking like a moron. Uh, not so good. No, and if you recall, you did a show a while back and you had me and Brock on the show and we talked about the releases that had taken place when COVID first started. And I think all three of us had named Rusev yep. as one of the guys that maybe this is his chance. Maybe this is where we're going to see this guy that some, a lot of people have been telling us we, he hasn't got a chance. You haven't seen him in his best yet. I was one of those people excited right. for him to go to AEW. Took yep. a little while for him to get there. Took a little while for the deb debut. Couldn't have been more disappointed, like you said. I, 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 I didn't have him on my three, but I understand. Now looking at this, I can't argue with these people. This guy completely – just fell off. I, I, I mean, it, this guy, he's mad because someone broke his arcade game. Right. He's a professional video game player. You know what? Go back and be the guy that's from whatever Eastern country you want to be from that week and do that because that was better than this. It, it's, it's really bad. It's really bad. And it looked like this past week, maybe they're going to try to make him a big tough guy a little bit again. But, no, so far it's been awful. Um, Kofi Kingston finished a second barely. Hard to argue him. Um, he is still a champion and a tag team champion, but he went from world champion back to what he's been doing for the last couple of years, throwing pancakes and whatever. Um, on my list, and she got four votes, um, but they were all third-place votes, so she finished way down the list. Shayna Baszler. Also, she got as many votes as anybody else, but they, again, third place votes are only worth one point apiece. So she finishes way down. Man, she came in a house of fire and they put her over in that Murdered elimination your chamber. In the elimination chamber. And now she's she's a tag champ, but she's in segments no one wants to see. So there's that category. Our next one, the exact opposite. Go figure. Biggest rise, the Rock Award for biggest rise of the year. 
Wow, how coincidental. Your winner, Roman Reigns. He barely holds off Drew McIntyre, and now this voting is interesting. Roman, four votes. Acknowledge me. Three first place in a second. He ends up with 18 points. Drew McIntyre gets seven votes, but he finishes one point behind. He had an incredible year, an incredible rise. Then in third, Jay Uso. Three first, five votes total. He's in third place. And then way behind is Keith Lee, MJF, Damian Priest, Drake Maverick, FTR. Nick, your thoughts on uh, Drew and Roman, who wins this? We're going to be hearing these two names a whole lot here in the next and hour I, or so. This one was Roman. He is what I want to watch. The tribal chief. I have used the analogy. I have not felt like this in 20 years, Ryan. If I'm 10 minutes out from home and Raw starts in five minutes, my pedals to the floor, I'm sorry, SmackDown. Yeah. My pedals to the floor to get home to see Mr. Roman Reigns. And I have not done that since there were two real shows on WCW and WWE in a Monday Night War. Yeah. Um, Roman Reigns, absolutely amazing year. Taking nothing away from Drew. Drew, what's, I'll give him this, through COVID and when Roman wasn't there, he was the he was keeping the ship afloat. Yep. Let, let's, let's give him his credit. He was cutting great promos, doing what he could with the matches that were available. Yep. Um, so I, I've got no problem with the people on this list. I thought the voters did a great job. Yeah, absolutely. And in this category, it's strange because a lot of dudes got first place votes. Keith got one. MJF got one. Damian Priest got one. Drake Maverick got a first place vote as well. Um, but Drew, you know, on my list, I had Jey Uso number one and I had Roman, then Drew McInfart right below him. So Drew McInfart. those three guys were the three guys. But um, it, if you would have picked any one of them, I'm not going to be upset with any of them they they all have an absolute case but you nailed it and you know since roman has come back we have high school football on friday nights high school sports i don't get to watch smackdown but when i get done working when i get done doing all my editing and everything i need to do covering you know which normally is around midnight one o'clock in the morning i am immediately turning on smackdown to watch roman and i don't care if i'm up till three four a.m sometimes depending on how much i have to do i'm watching it I am staying up, and I am watching that Roman and, and uh, Jay angle. Our next category, worst segment of the year. It is the Katie Vick Award for worst <laughs> segment of the year. And this one uh, is one of a few landslides on the evening. But I am shocked. Only two first-place votes. All of Raw Underground, all of it. Wins 30 total points. I believe it got nine total votes, maybe 10, if my math is correct, out of the 11, uh, 30. It doubles up the second worst segment of the year, according to our voters, Lana and Lashley's wedding with 15, and then the segment or couple where Retribution takes over the show, finishes third. Other ones in there, you had the karaoke showdown, Dinner Debonair got a couple of votes uh, with uh, Jericho and MJF. A couple of people that got one first place vote as well as the worst, the karaoke. Um, and then a bunch of random ones. Firefly, Dark Order in that main event, Swamp Match, uh, Miz and Morrison. All those get, uh, get votes for the worst segment of the year. Um, I think about 15 different votes here, Nick. But Raw Underground, far and away the winner. This one was what we were, what I was saying when the show first started. It was extremely hard. And they, you, you look at the 15, I'm looking on your list here. Any one of them could be number one. I could see an argument for any one. These are right. some bad freaking segments. I watched some Jedi mind stuff with Viking Raiders and the Street Profits, man. I mean, that was real bad. But I'll give it to people. If they, like, they say Raw Underground, and I'll defend them in this matter, it never did anything. It didn't build any characters. The best guy from Raw Underground is the door guy who yes. did nothing. He's the only guy who's doing anything. And he's you, still you, not. He's just standing I, there. He just stands there. And you get Dabo or Dabo, whatever his name is, Potato Potato. It, it, this guy, they built him up a little bit down there. 
and he gets murdered his first night on Raw. And then yep. these other guys would get murdered on Raw, but come down there in the underground and fight it up like I'm a tough guy. Well, what does that say if you can't make it out here, but you make it down there? It didn't right. help anybody. Half the matches didn't even end. They just, Shane McMahon just said, it's over, it's over, it's over. In my opinion, it, that sucked. It was a bad idea. I am in total agreement with the voters out here um, if they want to have this at number one. Waste of our time on Raw did not develop a character out of this thing. Yeah, and it was straight across the board. Most everybody thought if it wasn't the worst, it was right there mm-hmm. all together. Just stupid for everything you said. I want to mention Kevin, who voted um, the dinner debonair the worst. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was on my list, you know, when I made you know, threw down 10 things. It was there. Did not end up making the cut. But uh, the one vote for worst of the year goes to Kevin. It is the Zamboni Award at Joe Louis Arena for the best TV segment of the year. And this one was a big general broad scope. Again, Roman Reigns wins it. 21 points, three first place votes. Roman turning heel is the segment of the year followed by closely four votes it may be a lot of people like this and it just happened so it might be recency bias sting returning second place and then here we go the polarizing only two votes for dinner debonair but they were both first place votes it is third place for segment of the year um, followed by Edge Returns, the Bubbly Bunch. You and I both voted for that. We thought that was awesome. awesome. Um, that finishes uh, tied for fourth with nine. And then a bunch of stuff beyond that. Uh, Taker Retirement, Pat Patterson Tribute, uh, Drake Maverick gets his contract. Got a first place vote, actually. Only one vote, but it was first. So there we go. Your thoughts here. Once again, Roman at the top of the list. Again, I'm not going to argue with anybody. That was my vote, too. I'm one of the number ones. Again, that's why we're watching. So I'm not going to go in and reiterate what I just said a few minutes ago. The one I will take, Sting returning is pretty cool in the aspect of Sting returning. I'm a... I'm an NWO guy. I, I'm a WCW fan. Everybody know, you know, you know that. Um, I was on that side of the war. Even though I was an NWO, I still have a special spot in my heart for Sting Absolutely. because he was on the product. He was the the hero that was taking them down. What are you going to do with this guy? Right. Um, he, he drops in. He's 61 years old. He has real bad health issues that he can get in trouble with in the ring i've i've heard so i've he heard he couldn't wrestle 5 years ago how is he going to wrestle now um i had roman turning on jay number 1 bubbly bunch number 2 and edge at the rumble coming back my third um best tv segment of the year the guys who had the dinner debonair and i don't want to get too much into it cuz it's so polarizing you tell me it's great and i'll tell you that's the reason why it sucks and you'll tell me the exact opposite blah 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 but uh phil had that number 1 pat patterson tribute number 2 and then taker 30 year thing at Survivor Series number three in Austin. Once again, one of our younger guys, um, big AEW guy. And Austin is a writer actually for Cultaholic.com. He had the Super Wednesday debate between Jericho and Orange Cassidy, number two. And then number three, he had Becky Lynch um, giving up the belt and uh, giving it to Asuka, revealing that she's pregnant. I, so I think that was his quick, top three as well, we gotta, and that's one of our younger guys. We got to keep that in mind as older guys, that they didn't grow up through the Monday Night Wars. And I, I, I've said this before. I feel bad because they, they did truly miss, and I, I know that people are going to say I'm biased from that era, but they did truly miss the two greatest eras that we have seen since television has hit wrestling in the late eight, mid to late 80s wrestling and then the Monday Night Wars, NWO, and things like that. So, you know, you can't really credit these people that haven't seen this because I don't know how good Gorgeous George was, right? right. You know, I, I didn't watch right. that. My, my dad tells me about, you know, the, the Killer Kowalski and things like that. I'm like, I don't know who the heck the – Right, know. right, right. Okay, you know, that's great. I'm not sitting through his matches. But, you know, so I, 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 we got to cut the young crowd yeah. some slack there. Well, and if you like it, like I said, I don't, I'm not going to get big into it. I didn't. 
Uh, I disliked it immensely, but I understand why people did like it. Like I get, I, I get it. Well, next category, we go back to the worst. It is the Dungeon of Doom Award for the worst faction of the year. And this could have been our biggest landslide of all of them. The first eight ballots I looked at all had retribution number one. It sucked. It stuck. They finish with 10 of 11, excuse me, 9 of 11 first place votes. They also got a third. One person did not put retribution on that list. Um, they win 46 points. Dark Order, second. And the Nightmare Collective, the entire Nightmare family group, whether it be Brandy and her people, they were around for a week or three, or Cody with his job guy team, the Nightmare team finishes third. Worst faction of the year. Nick, we don't even need to explain this. This is look at all of this crap. This, this is the the biggest duh out of everything, is it not? I got no I got no argument on this, Ryan. Um, it's a run. I mean, this is just terrible. The retribution thing. Every episode, it, it's one of those ones that's like a train wreck. It, it can't get worse next week, and it freaking does. Because now they're trying week. to give them credibility a little now, and it. It's, I, who's going to buy it now? And not only that, they brought them in. They lost several of their, if not all of their first oh matches, you know, which yeah. totally just crushed them. And it's a bunch of jobbers with a jobber leader. Like, yeah. I mean, like, what, what am I right. supposed to cheer here? What's he ever done? Why am I cheering I mean, Maybe for they're him? not jobbers in NXT. I don't mean that to the NXT folks, but I don't know them. They are you know. with their Bane masks on and with you know. their stupid names. And when they jump Bob, around. Steady and who else you got there? Yeah. And when they jump around, I think people forget because, again, there were so many bad segments. They forget what made Retribution the worst faction of the year. Those first few segments when they were taking over where they were breaking stuff and they're jumping around like they're 11 and they're going, yay, yay, look at us, yay, yay. Crew of flunkies. That, and then they all was, got contracts. Yeah, and then they all got cut. <laughs> that is some of the worst stuff we have ever seen, and we've seen a lot of bad stuff. Yeah. That was, That's what made Retribution number one, and people forgot about that. The Best Faction of the Year Award, presented by the New World Order. Too sweet! This also, a landslide. Inner Circle was on every single cat. They, all 11 people voted for the Inner Circle. All first place votes, two seconds and a third. They win Hurt Business right there with 22 points at mm -hmm. number two. The Undisputed Era coming in third, 17 points. They did get a first. I was a little sure. shocked by this, Nick. The Dark Order got three votes here. Um, I was a little surprised there. My thing with the Inner Circle is they kind of win by default because we don't have very many good factions right now, and they have slipped here in 2020, but they're still yes, number they one by a long way. Don't cold award for best mic skills mm -hmm. of the year. This one was the closest one we had, and we had some tight ones, and this was the closest. We finished with a tie for first place. John Moxley and Eddie Kingston, 20 points apiece. Each got six votes. But John Moxley is going to win this because he received three first place votes. Eddie Kingston received two. So John Moxley is your winner. Shockingly, if you if you're someone who hasn't watched in six months, Roman Reigns finishing third here. The tribe will choose. with 15. And then we had MJF and Jericho both also tied with 13. Other people on the list. Alexa Bliss got one first place vote. Kevin, I believe, um, voted for her. She's always great. Yeah. Um, well, a first place vote there. And then Orton, Cody, Miz, McIntyre, Becky Lynch gets a third place vote as well. But those guys at top can't argue. I wouldn't be upset with any of these guys up top. Moxley and Kingston. Kingston's only been around for a minute, but man, he's made an impact on that stick. I I can't argue these any either way, and I think it is um, appropriate that Moxley did win it over Kingston, just because if you had to take the two, to, I think he's the better. I know it's just a Mike skills, but 
he's the better overall guy, you know, I think. But uh, And he's been cutting great promos all year. Moxley, I think, has really stepped up his game, and he's who I had number one. He's really stepped up his game really in the second half of the year even more than before because personally, I think he saved. And I think the angle still sucked, but he saved that MJF feud because MJF was out there clowning, doing mm-hmm. that whole that whole uh, vote for me thing. Didn't work. And Moxley cut some great promos. Their contract signing was maybe the best promo he has cut. He's done a ton of other stuff. Just really, really good promos. I think he's been awesome. Next category, Nick. It's the WrestleMania 3 Award. This is the happening. For the greatest show of the year. I was a little surprised by this. Um, I don't know if this has to do with it was the last huge show before the pandemic. And people just kind of remember it fondly. Or maybe they just liked it. The Royal Rumble wins and it gets five first place votes it gets 26 points it wins by a pretty good margin over a tie here between hell in a cell and AEW revolution they both come in with 14 winter is coming from a couple of weeks back on wednesday night got 11 and then a ton of other ones they're in your house full gear wrestlemania uh nxt 30 and on um, but those four really stood above everybody else. The Rumble with five first place votes. I know, Nick, you thought Hell in a Cell was the best. Hands of the down. Year. Uh, I, and I don't, I don't usually like Hell in a Cell because I, I, I don't mind it. I don't like the three Hell in a Cell matches. I don't like multiple. If it was right. just one a year, right. I'd have no problem. And with even it. though they were all three pretty good matches, they by the were. And you're like, dude, that's, this is the third one. I was shocked at how good that pay-per-view was. Um, and I don't want to go into detail, but all three Hell in a Cell matches I thought were very good. One of them I thought was phenomenal. Um, right. And it, I, I thought that was a great pay-per-view. I think – I don't know. I would wonder if people went back and watched the Rumble again. I don't hate it as like in the terms of all the Rumbles, if you took them all. I don't think it's at the bottom of it. But the card is not insanely strong, um, oh. which you can argue against. the Rumble never has been noted for that. But Lesnar murders, murders, like half the roster in the that The first thing. 15. Austin with Revolution first. Winter is coming second. WrestleMania, he had third. Kind of surprising there. And then um, I want to go to Paul who had Revolution first as well, double or nothing second, then take over 30. Revolution was, Revolution was good. Yeah. It was a real good pay-per-view. I thought the angles going in on it were really good. Um, I thought it was really well done. I wanted to see Jericho and Moxley. I put that up there. That was in my three. Yeah, and I had full gear first. Our next award, the Dolph Ziggler Award. For the most underrated wrestler in the business, Kevin Owens wins it. Three first place votes in a second, 18 total. He holds off, once again, a little surprised here. Bianca Belair, second, 13 total, two firsts in a second. Third place, Hangman Page. Fourth place, I had him on my list. I believe you did too. Sammy Guevara got the most votes out of anybody. But it was three thirds and then a first. He finishes with eight total points. Other dudes on the list, and a lot of people got one first place vote. Seth Rollins, Sami Zayn, AJ Styles all got a first, but that's the only vote they got. Um, Big E there as well, a first and a third. He finishes with six. I'm not a huge Bianca Belair fan. I'm not seeing what other people are seeing. She's not bad, um, but I'm just not seeing like. Oh, this girl, because to me, this underrate, this list underrated, these are guys you think could be in like the main, could lead the division, could be in the main event. And Kevin I think Owens, that's why Kevin Owens is there. Yeah, I get it. I, I he, the guy can talk, the guy can wrestle, the guy can work. The guy's the complete package. I'm not, I'm not mad at that. On my list, I had Sammy Guevara number one. I think this dude has could a be. chance to be great. I really do. I think he has a chance to be great. I had Bianca second. And uh, Big E, I had third. The most overrated 
Wrestler of the Year. <laughs> it is the Undertaker Award for the most overrated wrestler of the year. And it goes to all elite Scooby-Doo by a wide margin. Bray Wyatt or the fiend. He gets four first place votes, a second and a third, 24 total points. And oddly enough, right there with him, second place, his partner for most of the year, dancing partner, that is Braun Strowman, 13 to first third place, Darby Allen, he is tied, and I want to bring this up, Nick. He is tied for third with MJF. Most overrated. MJF got four votes. That is the third, excuse me, the second most amount of votes behind The Fiend. It was two-thirds and two seconds. That's why he only finishes with eight. But very telling there that that guy finishes with four votes, more than Braun and more than Darby. It's it's ironic you give the Undertaker award to the Fiend because it's it's so so. I mean, they both shoot lightning or have special powers. They're both from a mystical area or something. I'll be haunting your dreams. Really insanely stupid gimmicks, in my opinion. I'm sorry for the Undertaker fans. They suck. Um, like these are just terrible gimmicks. This guy, he's done puppets. He's done. This has just been awful. And. It, Again, you have said you can't bring Michael Myers into the wrestling world. It doesn't work. It, you, you can't. He can't get continuously back up. How do you beat Michael Myers? How do you beat Mike? You, you hire you Buster Rhymes. I think he took him out in the film. And I know a thing or two about horror. You ruin it when you bring him in. I'm in full agreement. I voted for the Fiend. This guy is terrible. I if this guy never came back tomorrow, I would not even question how you wrote him off. I would just be happy he's gone. Absolutely. It is awful. And, and it's, it's one of these gimmicks that at first, maybe, maybe you're like, oh, okay, let's see where this goes. But then there's nothing else to do with it. Like I've seen him get curb stomped a hundred times. I've seen him last night lit on fire in a box and he lives. I've seen him in his parallel universe. I've seen him scare people, even though Goldberg beat him in five seconds. And I've seen other people that, beat him. He's been beat by a 60-year-old man. Right. And I apparently he puts his mask on and he's invincible. Like, we know who's under that mask. What is it? Like, Over the it, top? Yeah. And when I turn my hat around, yeah. you know, I undergo a transformation. Is that the yeah. same thing that happens with the mask? I just try to take my hat and I turn it around. And it's like a switch that goes on. And when the switch goes on, I feel like another person. Yeah, easy, Stallone. It, <laughs> it, it just, and it's old, and it's hokey, and it's, it's... It is. If you like horror movies, God bless you. And if you like that, God I bless do. you. You know, I'm not here to tell anybody that they're wrong or what they should like and whatnot. But I think the people are speaking. This guy's not drawing ratings, but, well, he sells a lot of T-shirts because he's a cartoon, like, or he sells a lot of money. Well, that's because they have a mask that costs like $1,000 to buy. You know, that's more than a $30 T-shirt. It, it just doesn't work on the grand stage. And, Nick, your old adage that you have always said, and this has actually come to fruition because I have – friends with wives who have been embarrassed they are watching this braun Strowman is on their tv along with the fiend and their wives or girlfriends look at them Lock and them. question oh, okay, their decision yeah. making should yes. i marry this goof what is he watching bray wyatt is going to break up marriages that's where we're at folks yeah i mean and we did a segment where we showed bray wyatt to your girlfriend and she was just like you guys are losers. What are you, right. what are you watching? Um, it's, it's embarrassing, and none of it makes sense. And I don't want to see. If you can shoot lightning at a guy, or you can just disappear. I'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. When someone goes to punch you, why don't you just disappear then? And then they can't hit you. And I would it, argue, because we're going to keep doing this, I know, so we don't have to repeat. It's not about liking horror films. I'm a Star Wars fan. Yeah. I don't want to see a Jedi 
walk to the ring and start force pushing people. You know, I don't want to see a walking dead zombie. I I don't want to see a game of Thrones, someone riding a fake dragon to the ring. I don't, I don't want to see this. It doesn't fit in this world that this, I get reality wrestling is fake, but there's a world of reality, which it exists a bit up on it. And and you're breaking rules inside of it. And it doesn't make sense to me. Yes. Yes. Dragon, dragon, Game of Thrones, whatever, that's that world. That works. Hulk Hogan wouldn't walk into Game of Thrones and start <laughs> finger point and give he wouldn't give a dragon a big boot and a leg drop and he wins Game of Thrones. Like that wouldn't happen. No. That's that world. This is this world. And that's what all, none of this makes any sense. When you go back to worst segment of the year, Raw Underground. That's a different world. You showed us wrestling. Now you're trying to tell us, no, this is the real stuff over here. No, you can't do that because you just spent two hours telling me this was wrestling. And I got one. Like, I had to, I, I make sure my, the Young Bucks suck. I, I'm going to say that on every podcast. You, these guys suck. I don't know how they're not on this. I, 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 I think they are the most overrated. I had them on my list, so I – uh, but I'm fine with these three. But I just want to mention to people, the Young Bucks still suck. Yeah, they got one vote, and it was you. You had yeah, a second me. place. You're um, darn right. The Mega Powers Award for Feud of those the Year. Eyes, Luke. Man, the lust in those eyes. Roman and Jay. I am the head of the table. Roman and Jay, 21 points. Sasha mm-hmm. and Bailey, only four out of the 11 had it, but three firsts. So they're right there in second place. Edge and Orton get five votes. And then down on the line, Drew and Orton, Jericho and Mox, Young Bucks, FTR as well. Um, to me, I mean, this is a no-brainer, Nick. I, I, I had Jay and Roman at three, too. Um, I, I had not, I'm not, not a negative. Um, I had them. I, I thought that match, that feud, really, because it made Roman what he is right now, man. This is who we're watching. I, it's still yeah, I have no problem with that. Um, I I enjoyed Sasha Bailey. I thought the build was great. The only thing that me and you agree on this one, why did they speed it up at the end? They, it took forever to get to the point we wanted to see, and then she smashes her with a chair, destroys her. She's back in a week or two. You know, Everybody I mean, thought that, she'd that, be out till the Rumble, and she's back yes, like a week later. Yes, show up and let her win the Rumble. And then you their know, first then, match is Hell in a Cell. Their it, first match. That's why that feud, I, but I, I did, and to be honest with you, it was one of the only, because there were a lot of bad ones this year. But I want to get Amari in here. Amari had Randy and Edge as his feud of the year, Mox and Eddie second, and then Jay and Roman third. Um, even It's funny seeing people who absolutely hated Roman Reigns have now turned around, and they're at least putting him in the top three, if not number one Acknowledge me. for a lot of stuff. Um, once again, Austin from Cultaholic, uh, Young Bucks FTR, number one. The tag team of the year. This was not even close again. FTR is the winner. Eight or nine first place votes, 43 total. Street Profits come in second. They got a buttload of votes as well. And then Omega and Page coming in third with eight. Those are really the only ones we need to talk about, except yeah. for you mentioned the Bucks. I do want to say, now they didn't have the greatest year in 2020. They just now got to the top, but only three. They were only on three ballots. They deserved the number one vote. Um, Street Profits, I had a trouble. I was going to put them at one. That segment, or the whole, I shouldn't say segment, the whole thing with the Viking Raiders dropped them to two on my list. Exactly. Because I could not give them the number one. Having That, that, that was just terrible. Me too. Same thing. Um, Street Profits did get one first place vote. Amari had them number one. And I'm with you. I I like them. Yeah. No, I had them number one, too. And you nailed it. That whole feud and the whole, which didn't get any votes, I'm surprised, for worst segment of the year. Their contests where they were bowling and playing basketball and long darts and all that. That stuff was so bad. And um, that's what knocked them down for me as well. I am the one guy that voted for Omega and Paige, and I did it by default. Because with FTR, I thought they were bad when they came in. I thought when, they, when they're getting their truck stolen or whatever happened, I thought that was bad, and I didn't like the build to the Young Bucks. Everything else is great, and I think they have good matches, and they are the best team of everybody. Um, so I have no problem with them winning. The Lesnar Goldberg Rookie of the Year. 
this was an interesting one because there's not a ton of people. We counted AEW the whole year, like since Dynamite started. We counted from then, so like back in last October. And then through, WWE didn't have a ton of dudes. The winner is Pat McAfee by a long ways. Five first place votes, 29 points. Dominic second at 16. Orange Cassidy third. Followed closely by Darby Allen, Jungle Boy, Rip Baker with three votes. He's only had two matches. They have been good. He can wrestle. And, uh, man, the dude can talk. So he wins. I think, that, I think this category is one of those ones that illustrates they're not building characters. They're not developing people. I think Dominic Mysterio, and if, if people like him, that's fine. I don't. I think he's ter- he looks like a kid in, in eighth grade. Um, to me, I, I just, he, I don't buy him as a WWE superstar. Um, you know, and I'll give it, I will give Orange Cassidy this. He is far better than I ever thought he would be. Um, this, I, I'm not an Orange Cassidy guy, People but seem he to seems like to be over. The, and I don't have to like everybody, you know, that's fine. If he gets over and sells tickets, Hey, more power to him. Um, but he has, you got it. I think this, I think Orange Cassidy has had a phenomenal year. I had McAfee. I had Cassidy second. And Britt Baker, I had third. Um, I don't know if she can work a lick either, but, man, you know, she's been – you want to talk about most improved. Remember the first time she tried to talk? And now her her promos are good. The heartbreak kid comeback of the year. This one, not close either. And it maybe could have, should have been closer than it was. Edge dominates 46 points. He wins the comeback of the year. Roman Reigns behind him, 19. Sting right behind him with 16. And then you got MVP, Ciampa, Morrison, Sasha, Sami Zayn, Taker, Serena Deeb with one third place vote. Uh, Edge, not really too much you need to say here. Yeah, he got hurt, but the couple months he was there, Man, it was good. And you mentioned before, I stood up promos. when I was watching the Rumble when and he that's came your out guy. Chair. Yeah. I, I was like, oh my God, Edge. I didn't, they kept it such a great secret. I didn't know he was coming. Yeah, I didn't, I did, and I didn't tell you. I didn't tell you because Thank I knew God that's did, your guy. Man. Yeah. I, 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 it was awesome. I was like, yeah, Edge, because I'm always like, I think he, yeah, I have no problem with you giving it to him. Over, you know, um, oh. I, I think Edge deserves it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a cool thing to see him back. And I, I hope he's back and healthy. and can maybe work a full year so we can see some of these feuds. Like I said, Rollins, Owens, there's a list of AJ. Yeah. He, we have not seen this guy fight. Let's, let's, let's yeah. get him some matches out there if he can do them. The promos were great for months. So, yeah, I hope he's He's back. on borrowed time, so he, you got to be careful how much you use him and who you – we give us what we want to see that we never – I've already I, seen him fight Orton 30,000 times. Yeah, man. Edge and AJ at Mania, how good would that be? That would be. They tear it down. Yeah, it'd be great, man. That's I'm hoping for that. The most improved wrestler of the year. Your tribal chief. And this one is a tie, and it is a dead tie. We can't even break it up into first place votes because they both get three firsts and two seconds, and it's really the guys of this poll, the entire poll, Roman Reigns. Drew McInfart, they tie 21 points apiece. They are the most improved wrestler of the year. Then in uh, third place, Jey Uso, 12 points. And then on down the line, Orange Cassidy, John Silver with a first and a third. Lashley, a first and a third. Zayn, a first. Darby, a first. I, I mean, these two guys, I mean, Drew McIntyre at this point, last, I mean, last summer or even, I don't think he was getting pushed right now. Last summer, not the past one, 2019, he was King Corbin's lackey um, wasn't was doing he, anything. Was, was he even back on TV yet a day from taping right now, the December 15th, 2019? Was he even back on TV yet? I don't know. I don't know that he was. And if he was, he had just come back. I thought they missed him and threw in the towel on him. Thank God they pushed him. He had a great year. Like I said, again, got us through COVID. Roman Reigns, I don't know if it's a rise or most – because he was always, to me – I've always liked this guy, face or heel. I think he's – but we are finally seeing what we needed to see. This is a new Roman. This is a Roman we've never seen before, like with this gimmick, this attitude, this style, and I love it. I I got no problem with these – these top two are just – 
pole. They deserved a tie. Yeah, you know, everybody was saying that, uh, that he couldn't talk. That was the biggest thing. Well, he can't talk. Well, you're seeing that he can talk. Most improved, Jay Uso, says Kevin. Damian Priest. And then, and this is one I had as well. Sonia Deville gets forgotten about. She yeah. gets on that mic, and all of a sudden, we're like, where was this? She was awesome on that mic and it's obviously terrible what happened to her and hopefully we see her back soon because i think they might have something with her moving on to the stone cold is the referee worst match of the year that's right if you haven't paid any attention have you ever noticed that whenever stone cold's the referee the match ends up sucking partially because maybe he takes all the heat away from everybody else I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, the Donald Trump match, the um, Lesnar-Goldberg match, the uh, Michael Cole-Lawler match. You know, those were really good. Anyway, worst match of the year, this one, not close. The swamp fight at the horror show that is Extreme Rules. Once again, Bray Wyatt on top of the worst of the year list. Um, five first place votes. It gets seven total, 29 total points, followed by with only 11, eye for an eye, first and two seconds. I forgot about this match. Again, it's The Fiend. Fiend against Goldberg from Super Showdown, third. The Prophets against the Viking Raiders. That match, brutal, cinematic. Funhouse match. Money in the Bank match. Boneyard gets one vote. Are you noticing a trend here? These are all cinematic matches Bogus. over and over and over. Mimosa Mayhem, Braun against Miz and Morrison, the Casino Battle Royal finishes this up. But the Swamp Fight, Nick, my gosh, you and I came on here and said this may have been the worst pay-per-view we have ever seen. This yes. match at the top of that. Yep. Yep. I, I don't even think, because we've already covered that match in detail on another cast. Um, that we did. It was awful. It made no sense. It was stupid. There wasn't even a swamp to the last few minutes. <laughs> yeah, the at the very end. I, I, there was handcuffed guys to a chair, a little rocker. I mean, it was Bray Wyatt controlled the light in the jungle or wherever the hell they were in the swamp. It, it was terrible. The eye for an eye was just stupid going in. And it was so bad how that ended. Got no problem with either one of those. What you, and the Fiend versus Goldberg. They're that might have been the down. I mean, this guy, this unbeatable monster gets beat by grandpa in yeah. like four minutes. Yeah. Like and, and, and again, dang near everybody had this on their list. Austin comes in with Fiend Goldberg number one. Money in the bank comes from Paul, eye for an eye. And then money in the bank, Strowman White, he had third. I had the fun house at Mania because it wasn't a match. We right. were supposed to get Cena versus, and it wasn't a match. Yeah, and I'm going to go back to Omari on that one. He has the Boneyard match, number one. Okay. Worst match of the year. Second worst match of the year. Firefly Funhouse match, Bray and Cena, and he then Ricochet and Lesnar. You know, that they, they weren't, that one especially yeah. was not a match. So, yeah. Um, another argue. swamp match comes in from Dan, uh, Mike Brisson. We have not heard from Mike yet. He has the fiend against Cena number one. So on the exact opposite end of that, Nick is the match of the year. And this one, man, I had no clue. I didn't have a match this year that I was like, oh, you know, there was no savage steamboat to me or anything. You know, there was nothing close to that, that I thought I got. This is got to be one of the greatest things i've ever seen so kind of along that theme we go with the brett hart versus anybody match of the year award you know just fill in the guy and brett's gonna put on a show it ends up in this one too all over the place like 15 different matches roman and jay at the clash of champions four votes total three firsts 18 points your match of the year Sasha and Bailey at Hell in a Cell, also four votes, two first, two seconds, 16 points there. Young Bucks against FTR from last month's full gear with 12. Best friend Santana Ortiz in the parking lot. 
McIntyre and Roman at Survivor Series. Edge and Orton, greatest match ever. Uh, Bucks, Hangman, Page, and Omega, a match that Meltzer says is the greatest tag match of all time. Well, they got one vote in our poll. So there you go. Um, Nick, you had Sasha and Bailey as the match I, of the year. I, I, I will, you know, I'm not mad that people voted Roman and Jay because angle wise and story wise, that is, that probably does deserve it. I just like Sasha and Bailey because of the stuff they were doing moves. And it, it seems like they were being inventive in a match that I didn't think there was much else you could do. Yeah. You know, um, they were pulling out some things and making, throwing each other different ways and putting objects in the cage and throwing each. I thought it was inventive. I, I loved it. Yeah, I had Roman J, Sasha, then the parking lot brawl on my list. Um, Ryan Ross comes in and he had, he had McIntyre and Roman at Survivor Series, number one. He had the dog collar match, Cody and Brody Lee, number two. And then in, in, in another one, I don't think anybody else had that. And also okay. Omega against Pac or Pac, the Iron Man match. I, I probably did. I have to, I, that one even slipped my mind, but I bet it, I, yeah, it probably was a great match. Yeah. yeah. Paul had the parking lot brawl, number one. Amari had the full gear, Bucks FTR, number one. Jey Uso, Roman. Um, and then the greatest match ever. They're all good Following matches. That. They really yeah. are. That takes us to our next category. And it is the Nicole Bass Award <laughs> oh, for the man. worst woman wrestler of the year. Um, somewhat close, but Nia Jax is your winner. Five votes, four first place votes. She beats four votes, four first place votes. Abaddon is second. Lana third. Chris Statlander, fourth. Carmella, Rio, Nyla Rose, Big Swole. You have a problem with this, and I do a little bit. I had Nia on my list. She did not make my final three. I'm not a fan. Like, I'm not saying I got a Nia Jax shirt that I'll see <laughs> right. on the next podcast. She's not the worst, though, to me. I, and I know people get on her because apparently she works – what, what most people would call strong people. style right. if it was Shinsuke Nakamura. But I guess with her, she hurts people. Right. So I guess it just depends on the wrestler people are looking at. But so is Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins has banged up some pretty key freaking people at key moments, man. I don't understand. Ab Abaddon. A now, Abaddon. Nick, here's the thing with Abaddon. She was on my list as well. And going in, she was my number one, no doubt. Number one. End it. That's it. Then I started thinking, and at that point, she had only been on Dynamite two times. I don't watch Dark. I, I've seen Dark once, maybe twice. And I guess she's on there. But she, she's not on the show. And now she just started getting on the show and in, in the main she's event angle. Care. But I hadn't seen her. No, but what I'm saying is I don't know that she got votes because I don't know that other oh, people maybe. have seen her as much either. So they might not even know who the heck she is. And, and we anybody, are doing this early. If anybody tunes in for the first time and sees that. Yeah. I mean, I remember your text message. Fucking thing sucks. I'm sitting, I was driving home. I, I had to work in the morning, couldn't watch AEW. I got a text message on your, my phone. It's a picture of her with you below it saying, so this debuted last night. <laughs> Not her or any, this. I didn't know. I didn't know if it was a her. I'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. It's terrible. I, I'm glad it at least got second. This, I hope to God, 2020, we never see this woman again. This is the well, worst thing I've ever freaking seen. Well, and those who voted, voted first. It's the only thing in this entire thing, unless you've got one she vote. She will lose you viewers if new fans show up. If that's on in a college dorm room or something, obviously we don't, you know, everything's yeah. COVID. What? She will lose you viewers if this well, Nick, woman. Nia Jax is not going to lose you viewers. Well, This Nick, woman will cost you. Nick, what's the difference between her and The Fiend? There isn't one. She's the Except same. Maybe the Firefly she's worse Funhouse. In the ring, I guess. I don't. The, the same freaking character. The fiend talks. I guess it's the she's same. She's a zombie thing. girl, and they're all scared of her. Like they see her and they freak out. It's the fiend, and she crawls like the fiend. Like it's female 
fiend. I have Chris Statlander number one. You're an alien. You're an alien. You're from wherever you're from. No, no, you're not. And they talk like her spaceship just landed on the beach in Jacksonville. And she took like some kind of like spaceship sidecar over to the arena. Like what makes you an alien? Because you have one paint stripe on your, like your David Bowie. Yeah. Like that's what makes you, is that what aliens do? They paint a stripe on their face. Get out of here. Now we flip it around. It's the Miss Elizabeth award as it should be or woman of the year. And this one was not close either. Bailey shouldn't be with a huge year. Bailey getting six, seven total votes, six first, 33 points. She beats out her tag team partner who actually got more votes, but they were all second because of Bailey. So um, there you go. Britt Baker got three votes, all third place. But it, this was Bailey all day. Bailey and Sasha ran the women's um, the entire year, and people are saying Bailey did it the best. She has went from unwatchable to enjoyable to me. I, I, she is my favorite women's wrestler in the industry right now. Um, and as you and I both know, we've had some issues not liking her, even being escorted out of certain events for not liking her. Um, well, maybe change of seat. I yeah, we were, we were taken. <laughs> we were actually upgraded for our upgraded great opinion on how Bailey was people terrible. About Bailey. Um, I, we did not like her. I, we I could enjoy not like her not. less, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I keep going to Austin because he has maybe the most diverse ballot out of anybody. Um, and I, I like him here. You and I, I did not put her because I don't think she had the greatest year. I thought she got hampered with a bad tag team and Nikki Cross, and now she's with The Fiend. Austin's got Alexa number one. She's and awesome. I, I think she is the best woman. I didn't, she didn't have the best year. She is, without question, the best talker. And I don't think she can work as bad as they're like, oh, she can't work. She can work. They're ridiculous. Like, she's not she's Charlotte fine. Flair. She's fine. Yeah, she's fine. Exactly. He has Alexa, Sasha, and Thunder Rosa. Wanted to get that in there, though, because he had Alexa. And I agree. Like, if I were going to start a woman's division, I'm starting it with Alexa Bliss because she can talk. Paul has Io Shirai, number one. Um, wanted to get that in there as well. Bianca Belair. From Phil, I like her. I, I'm yeah. waiting to be impressed. Yeah, I think she's good. I'd like to see her. The hair thing is stupid to me. That's where she, she loses can work. Me. She's strong. I do like yes. the e. Once you figure out, like I didn't know what EST meant when I first heard it in NXT. I'm like, what? what are you? Oh, once that hits you, it's like that's cool. I like that. She can work. She can talk. I don't. The, the hair thing is stupid, but that's minimal. Um. I think she's got it. 2021 is going to be huge for her. The Giant Gonzalez, worst no, it. man of the year. This too, I will have to count these. I think I'm looking at 20 different names. But the man that stands above them all, three out of 11 people voted for him. But all three, the fiend. Number one, worst Wrestler of the year. He dang near clean sweeps the worst categories. Number two, only two out of 11, but two first place votes. I was shocked. Otis, Matt Hardy, third with nine. Sonny Kiss, a first and two thirds. Marco Stunt, two seconds and a third. Braun Strowman, Lars Sullivan, Joey Janela, our truth, the fiend. The people that don't like this guy. It is making them not watch wrestling. Um, Dan Fearson being number one. He liked Bray Wyatt. He liked the Wyatt family. He hates The Fiend. He hates the Funhouse. It has made him stop watching wrestling to the point that his girlfriend bought him for Christmas last year. They live in Austin, Texas. Happy Chinooka. Bought him Christmas present to go to the Royal Rumble. In Houston, he sold the tickets. Oh, man. I am not quite sure how he still has a girlfriend after that. He does one year later, but he sold the tickets. And mainly, there was a number of things he didn't like. Mainly, shows build around the fiend and how terrible it is. This is making people not watch. 
and it's not getting you new viewers either. Right. The, the people that left from the Attitude Era aren't flipping through and being like, oh, this is cool, this is sweet, and you're not getting new viewers. I'm seeing it with my, I mean, as a teacher, wrestling is not cool right now, and these are some of the reasons. He is a big reason why. There's nothing cool about that. The no. NWO was cool. That made you want to watch Stone Cold, The Dude, Rock. Those guys were cool. I, this is not cool. I walked into my dorm room, and I, we had a set up suites, eight people in a room, four rooms, two in each room. I, I roomed with all football players. Yeah. And I walked, I'm like, oh, my God, man. And it's so embarrassing. First week I get to school in 97, and they're like, I can't believe you watch wrestling. By the end of freaking quarter, like the semester, my roommates go, bang, you know, he's doing yeah. DDP. And they're like, yeah. we got everybody on which side they got into it. Thank God I'm not showing these guys the fiend today. Yep. Because it would have gotten, I would have been outcasted. I would have had to go home every weekend, <laughs> sit in the corner. They, they would have not hung out with me. No. Like this guy is embarrassingly bad, man. It, it's embarrassing. Brock, we have not mentioned Brock yet. He comes in. Sonny Kiss, worst wrestler of the year. Sure. And he got a couple of votes, as we said. He got three. He got a first, a third, and a third. Brock has him, Sean Spears, and Marco Stunt. Uh, Jeff comes in with R-Truth, Braun Strowman, Darby Allen, Ryan Ross, Matt Hardy, number one, Riddle. Anyone from Retribution, number three. That's funny because <laughs> Brisson... <laughs> Brisson also comes in at number one. Anyone from Retribution at number one for worst of the year. So, yeah, these are really all over the place. Uh, Jelly Janella, number one, followed by Marco Stunt and Sonny Kiss for Kevin. The final award, the big award of the evening, the Hulk Hogan Award for Brother of the Year otherwise known as Wrestler of the Year. This was the easiest one. This one, I just went boom, 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 done. For me, every other one was super hard. We only have six guys, seven guys get votes. And to me, it was three dudes. Those are the top three. And I'll do them in reverse order. John Moxley, number three. Great year. A lot of votes. Two firsts, 23 total points second place four first four seconds i am your tribal chief 32 points roman reigns and drew mcintyre is your wrestler of the year 37 points he wins it by five over roman the thing i heard from everybody why drew over roman was drew's been doing it since january 1st till today roman came in at the end of SummerSlam. Summerfest. If he was doing what he was doing all year long, he'd be the guy. I argue that he is far and above better than anybody on earth. The champion. That makes him the dude. I don't care when it was. He was supposed to be in the main event of Mania. Even if you didn't like what he was doing then, he was still the man. And then he became the friggin' best thing I've seen in wrestling at least since the summer of punk. And I like this better than the Summer of Punk. So it's been a decade since I've seen anything this good. I had Roman, Drew, and Mox, one, two, three. Um, you did as well. But what do you think about Drew getting it? I don't have a problem with it. I, I, don't need, I, can, I, I understand if that's people's gripe. I'm just going to go back to what I said at the beginning of the show. You're 10 minutes out. The show is starting five minutes. Who are you speeding home to see, Roman or Drew? I'm not taking away from Drew. I'm just saying Roman is the best thing summer of punk since summer since the week or the one promo of punk. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I mean that that's you had know, a good match. I think, the I think Roman the Reigns is the best thing that's happened in wrestling since before when all the big guys left the Angles, the Austins, the Rocks. Wow, all those guys exited. I think he's the greatest thing that's happened since then. Right now, Drew has had a great year, and let's not leave out Moxley. No, Moxley has really brought credibility still because, you know, the title transition, you, you wondered, it's a new program, it's a new company, got to make sure that title stays prestigious, and Moxley has carried it well, he has represented it well, um, 
I, I, he's cut great promos. He's had some great matches. And here's a side note there. They haven't overused Moxley. No. He's not wrestling every week. Yeah, the two Moxley votes come from Deke, and they come from Amari. They both voted Mox number one. Amari has Mox, Drew, and Cody Rhodes. So he did not have Roman on his list. He wouldn't acknowledge me. Uh, Fearson goes Drew, Roman, Randy, Orton, number three. Been cutting great promos all year. Um, Randy Orton has Drew, AJ Styles, and Kenny Omega comes from Mike. So there it is. You know, and it was as expected, kind of the Drew and Roman show. I didn't think it would be maybe quite that much. Um, and, and I was surprised by The Fiend. You know, I have not been a fan from the word go. I knew his numbers have been sliding a little bit. I did not expect this. I mean, right. hands down, you go through this thing. Worst wrestler of the year. Most overrated. Worst match of the year. He has two of the top three. Biggest fall. He's up there. You know, just, I was absolutely shocked. So there it is, man. Love it, hate it. Let us know. Leave a, if you think we're idiots, if you sit there and go, Chris Statlander is the greatest thing I've ever seen, what's wrong? Let us know. Yes, right in the I would love to read. You know, and if you got, yeah, I'd love to read them. Or, I love or The reading. Fiend. And, you know, if you like it, God bless you. I'm glad. I just don't think the world agrees with you. You know, that's why they're getting 1.5 million people. But, <laughs> Uh, anyway, Nick, I appreciate it. All the guys who, who um, took a couple of minutes um, and put some time into this, thinking about it, going back over some bad stuff that we've seen over uh, the past year. Appreciate you guys doing it. And again, this is just our opinion. This doesn't mean any. This was just 11 dudes having some fun and wanted to put it out there and see what you guys think. So again, if you agree, disagree, let us know, man. It's all good. This is wrestling. It's supposed to be fun. See you! Pleasure's all yours, Bucky boys.